Hello and welcome to the third video in this series programming Simple Floppy Robin. Forgot the name again. Must be sticking with me well. Okay, last video then we got round to adding in our background uh, image onto our application and in this video, before we can actually start getting on with making a little Robin jump on the screen, we need to learn how to detect touches on a layer. And the way we do that is quite simple. Um, if you look up the hierarchy in what CC layer subclasses, etc., etc., you'll find that there are some virtual functions uh, defined, which we can then define in our class and override to use to detect touches. And the way this is is written, I'll write one of them and then copy the other two in because they're very simple. But we've got CC touches, and it's began. And what these take then as an argument, all of them's the same thing. It's a Cocos 2D I need, and it's a CC set. So a pointer to a set, which is just a, a collection, if you ever look at the definition of that inside the library. And then we also have an event also, which we won't be needing to deal with. And it's a pointer to event like so. So this is a function that we're going to override that tells when a touch has begun. So it says when the finger goes down or fingers go down on the screen, then it's this function is called and this set uh, contains the point of where these touches were made. There's also one called moved and also one called ended. Moved is for when the finger is dragged across the screen or fingers dragged across the screen, returning a set of those touches. And last but not least, we then have the ended, which is where the finger actually lifts up from the screen. And why has it got some red code here? Mamba cannot really. Okay, good. So what I want to do now then is take these three functions and we're going to drop these then inside the hello world scene.cpp. By the way, we're inside the hello world scene.h. It should have been obvious hopefully already. I'm going to take those three functions and just drop those now. I think above the initialization function here, the init function, like so, and just quickly put some brackets in here so everything looks a little bit neater than it did anyway, so I'll just copy and paste that and paste that there. Good. And now we can deal with our functions. The one thing also I need, of course, is the hello world as well, like this, I think. And the virtual needs to go off. Somebody is a tiny little bit ring rusty. Okay, good. So that's done. So now we've got those defined, we can look at actually using these functions to detect our touches. Now I've already said that the one we're really going to be interested in is the one where the finger lifts up for our representation. Of course we can do something with multi-touch or we don't want maybe somebody to move their finger but let's just keep this as simple possible. The only one we're going to be interested in is this function here, the touch is ended because we want to know when a finger is lifted up and we want to know at what point that finger was lifted up. Okay so we're going to, for the sake of a tutorial, keep things as simple as possible. And the way we do this is actually quite simple. We have a set here, which you can go and look at the definition of this class inside Cocos 2D. That's what's great about the framework. It's all open source, you can see. But essentially we can have an iterator, just like a vector, say in C++, where we loop through all of the, in this case, touches, and they belong to a class called CC Touch. So we'll cast our iterator to this class, and then we'll get the coordinates of this um, touch using uh, something called get location, which converts its location into something represented by our screen dimensions, our GL view, and then we use this point that we get to do something with this point. So without rambling on any more, because it probably makes no sense, what we need to iterate through it, we need something called a CC set iterator, and we'll just call that I, and then we need something called a touch. So we've got CC touch and we'll call that touch and it's a pointer to that object. And now we have a CC point, which is a structure and we'll call tap. And that's where our tap was, where we tapped the screen, where the finger left the screen and we'll get that value from the touch. You'll see how that's done. So now we've got all that information, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. We can now run our iterator. So we want to say four. And the initialization here is for our iterator equals p touches, and there should be a begin. 
and we want to keep going whilst we're not at the end so it's similar to how you would um, iterate through a vector then say in C++ P touches and end and then we just increment our iterator by one in that way and now when we've got something out of here the first thing we need to do is get our touch and as with most things in C++ we need to cast our touch to a uh, CC touch pointer of whatever is pointed at by our iterator and now we can say that if we actually have something so we're not pointing to nothing then we can do something with it so now that we've got something we need to get the location on our screen and to do that we just use touch and get location and now that we have that location we can do something with it in this case for this video we're just going to say CC log and we're going to say touched at and I'm just going to say percentage point two F and percentage point two F and then we just want our tap dot and X and our tap dot Y which is the location of where the screen was touched now it's a real pain when you're doing a lot of logging to have to log information like this and I might well later on in the application do something which I have a library which I use for my other games which has various helper methods which actually allow you just to put a string in here and it does the, the lifting for you so you don't have to do these percentage and f's all the time but for now it'll do. Okay so now that we um, have our touch functions in and overridden we still won't be detecting touching because what we actually need to do inside the initialization we need to tell the layer that we want to be able to receive touches so we go to set touch enabled and true and you might think well this should be on automatically all the time but if you think about it in games there are many occasions where say you want to do some processing or something where you actually want touch to be disabled so the user can't uh, mess anything up particularly in game over situations or something like that so you could set that then again to false or there's more complicated reasons for enabling or disabling touches depending on how your layers are stacked on, on top of each other and things like that but we don't need to go into that inside this tutorial suffice to say you need to call this line to set touch enable to true and then when touches happen you'll receive them on your layer in these functions here so all being well now then I should be able to I'm just checking down whether I've got the uh, console enabled or not down yes I have I should be able to now run the application and build and hopefully see in the log that we have some touches on the screen so I'm just going to move this up a little bit we've got the log and now you can see down in the log as I'm touching the mouse it's giving us the coordinates of where are actually touching the screen and the thing to notice here actually if I touch down the bottom the Y is actually quite small if I move you can't see but if I move the mouse and touch to the top the Y is now big so in Cocos 2DX Y the bottom of the screen as we look at is smallest and biggest at the top and that's something always useful to know for future reference the other thing that I glossed over just now was this CC log here that's a macro which again you can go and look in the source at the definition provided by the Cocos 2DX framework which simply logs things out to the console and then when you compile in release mode these logs then don't print to the console anymore so it's a convenient way of enabling or dis disabling debugging information okay then so that's actually it for this video in the next video we can look at actually putting our good old little uh, flying robin where is it here flying robin on the screen and work out how we're going to touch it and get it to bounce to our touches just like the uh, the floppy bird game so i hope that makes some sense and thanks very much for watching comments questions criticisms welcome as always on youtube